I hadn't even planned on using a curriculum for geography this year and at the last minute I've decided to add one in. So today's video is a look at what we are using for geography this year. So the main reason I didn't actually get a geography curriculum for this year was because the Good and the Beautiful actually has geography woven into their language art courses in both the levels that we're using for our children this year. And I believe it's something like every 10 lessons in the level two. And I'm not sure actually how it works with the level one, but that was going to be the geography for this year. They were I was just going to let them do the geography lessons in here, supplement it with some living books. But at the last minute, I've decided to add in a UK study. So we're going to be studying the UK. I found a curriculum that we can use for this and I'm going to show you the resources that I've also gathered to use alongside it. I'm keeping everything on our main homeschool bookshelves. I got this large magazine file box in Sainsbury supermarket and everything fits in there apart from the two main reference books we're going to use. They are just tucked down the side. I'm going to start with the actual curriculum that we've got for our UK study and that is the CGP United Kingdom study book for Key Stage 2 Geography. So I got the study book which is like the parent guide or the teacher manual and then I got one each of the activity books for the girls to use. So the study book itself is quite small, there's not tons of lessons. And the whole book is in colour, which I love. And then the contents basically covers an introduction to geography and the UK, cities, countries, and then all the different places in the UK. And this is basically how the whole book is laid out. So this would be the part that you would read. So we're going to be reading, looking at these pictures. And then there's an activity page for every lesson in the student book. So that's the study book and now I will show you inside the activity books. These are actually black and white and to be honest, you could just purchase one and photocopy the sheets if you have multiple children. That would definitely save money um, and just be maybe a good idea if you wanted to keep it and reuse it over and over as well and didn't want to actually write in it. So as I said, there's an activity page for every lesson. There's a good variety of different activities in here as well, actually, which I like. Lots to keep us going and keep the learning happening. So I'm thinking the lessons are probably going to take anywhere from about 15 minutes to probably 45 minutes, depending on how far into a subject we go. I have actually got some UK reference books so that if we want to dive deeper into a place, we can look at those and I'll show you those next. So these are the reference books that we can use. We have maps of the United Kingdom and the big book of the UK. I'll start with the maps of the United Kingdom. This is such a cool book. It lays out maps of all the different places found in the four countries of the United Kingdom. There are facts, people, famous people, famous landmarks, um, famous things that have happened and Oh, so, so much. You can literally pick a place and just learn so much. And then the big book of the UK is quite similar, actually, but um, focusing less on the maps and more on history of the UK and landmarks as well and just different culture that we have in the UK. So this will pair brilliantly alongside the Maps of the United Kingdom book. So that's the curriculum and the reference books. And now I'm going to show you what else is in here. So I've got the story of London, Osborne Early Reader. And I'm planning on reading one story out of here every now and then. There are nine chapters and it just covers different history of London. It starts as early as Roman rule and Vikings and goes all the way through to the 20th century and includes different historical events and important things that have happened in London. And I really love the pictures that are in this one. 
I've also added in here our primary atlas. This is the Collins one. We were using the Age 4 Plus. We've moved on to the 7 Plus one now. And it's a really great atlas to just have on hand when you're doing geography. So that is going to be in here as well. Then these were the journals we used last year, actually, but we didn't fill out that many pages. So I thought I'd put them back in here. They're great for when we want to create a map or something related to geography. So I'm keeping these in here to carry on using as well. Then I've tucked in this little plastic wallet with some UK printables that I want us to use. I'll leave a link in the description for these because they're brilliant. We've got the London Landmarks poster and the flashcards that go with it. So these I thought would be a good idea to learn some landmarks in the UK. And then these brilliant maps. So there's a map poster of the UK and then a map puzzle. So you, I just cut this out and laminated it myself. Um, and it's got the four countries of the UK and you just piece them together where they belong on the map. So I thought that was a brilliant thing to add in here as well. Lastly, there are also the country flashcards. And my favourite thing about these are the fact that it's got the capital city of each country. So we can memorise each country and its capital city as well. The last thing in here are our letters from afar. This is such a treasured subscription for us. We've loved these for years. They used to come with these beautiful vintage stamps, which we use to make a front cover for our book. And they're basically these letters that are signed by Isabel, who goes on amazing adventures all around the world. She visits so many different places in so many different countries on every continent and they just detail the adventures that she gets up to in the places that she visits. So I'm going to pull out every one that we have that is UK. So we've got Cornwall, England and I know there's a Northern Ireland one and then I'm just going to flick through and see if there's any other UK letters in here and we will pull them out and read them as part of our study as well. So that is everything that we are using for geography this year. It's very much a last minute addition to our curriculum, but I'm so glad that I did add it. My goal is for us to complete maybe one lesson a week, as well as the geography lessons that are already included in their language arts courses. Their math as well has actually got aspects of geography in too. So with this curriculum added as well, I think we've got geography covered for the year.